Guys, it is hot outside, but I'm sure I don't need to tell any of you that because you're already well aware. It's August, it's the peak of summer, and your Subaru's AC system is putting in overtime to keep you cool on those longer drives. In today's video, we're gonna talk about an issue that might pop up with your air condition system, what to do when that issue pops up, and how you can go about preventing it in the future. So guys, about a month or so ago, I posted a video on automotive AC system theory and operation. I will pin it up here in the top corner of the video for those of you interested in looking at it. In that video, we talked about the components, theory, and operation of automotive AC systems. We talked about the components location on the car as well. In that video, we found out that the evaporator is the part that's inside of your car, inside of your dashboard. Now the evaporator's job is to take the heat energy from inside the cabin of the car, transmit it to the condenser where it's dumped outside of the vehicle. So during normal operation of the HVAC system, we found out the evaporator core is chilled. It gets a lot cooler than the ambient air temperature outside of the vehicle or the temperature inside the cabin. Now when this happens, the evaporator core attracts moisture in the air, humidity in the form of condensation. Now this condensation builds up and builds up on the evaporator core until the water droplets are big enough to fall off of the evaporator core and they start collecting in the HVAC box or the EVAP box. Now, if there were no way to get this moisture out of the EVAP box, that water would raise, that water level would accumulate as you drove and to the point where that water would start overflowing the EVAP box and pouring out of your dashboard. To prevent that from happening, you have a drain in your EVAP box that drains that water outside the car through the firewall underneath the car. So during normal operation, condensation forms, it drops off of the evaporator core, it flows down to the drain tube and drains out from underneath the car. Now if trash and debris build up inside the EVAP box, that water can mix with that dirt, debris, and trash and form a sludge, form a mud, and it can actually clog up your drain, which that is exactly what happened to me this weekend on my 2013 Crosstrek. Now we'll split back and forth between some video I took this weekend when the actual issue occurred and come back and forth. All right guys, so I know I didn't really get a good shot showing you what I was doing under here, uh, but here's what happened. So, driving down the road, me and my girlfriend were uh, out running around, and she noticed that there was water in the floorboard, and at first she thought maybe she'd spilled part of her bottled water, uh, but then, after we stopped and got back in the car and started driving again, she noticed it was a ton of water and noticed it was way too much to have uh, spilled from her bottle. So, being uh, nearly 100 degrees, I was still gonna run the air conditioner, uh, so we got to the next stop, and I had a sneaking suspicion that it was exactly what it is, uh, that the EVAP box, uh, the evaporator core box, had uh, backed up. The drain was not draining the condensation from the box and the water was building up in the dashboard and leaking from the dashboard into the floor. As you see here, I got wet carpet, I've got a wet floor mat, and uh, you know, wet hands. So how this normally works is, hopefully you'll be able to see this, there's a rubber hose right here, and it hooks up right here to the uh, HVAC box, and it comes down under the carpet to right there, and it goes outside through the firewall and under the car. And during normal AC operation, condensation will drip out the bottom of the car, just like this. If you ever have your car running on a hot day with the air conditioner running, you notice that water drips normally on the passenger side near the firewall. And uh, you know, you let it run long enough, you get a big puddle. Well, if it has nowhere to drip out like it is here, it will back up and start going out of the dashboard and into your floorboard. So normally what happens is mud or debris or an insect or a dirt dauber or something like that clogs up that hose and it can't flow. Well, I reached back here behind the carpet, grabbed my hose and uh, pulled it through the firewall, checked it, didn't see any kind of blockage in it. So then I reached up here, 
grabbed the hose at the evap box, pulled it back, no water came pouring out. So I knew the hose wasn't an issue, the blockage was in the box. So I took, first I took my pocket screwdriver, but it was too long. Uh, then I took this little wooden skewer and broke a piece off of it and uh, took it and started jamming it in the hole. And as soon as I did that, poof, Niagara Falls, waterfall started. So I put my finger over the hole really quickly to block it from pouring more water in my floorboard and uh, hook my hose back up. And then that's where you see this big old puddle of water come from as my evap box finally drained out. So periodically you get stuff in there, trash in there uh, that plugs up that drain. That's why it's crucial to change your cabin air filter and check it frequently. Now mine's a little over a year old at this point. I probably should have already replaced it. I have not checked it, but we will be pulling it out to see if it is, uh, you know, super clogged up. And uh, also I'll be sitting out here with my windows cracked uh, for the rest of the afternoon, hoping that uh, this water evaporates and gets out of the car. So guys, as you saw in the clip, my issue was a blockage in the actual port off of the evap box. It wasn't the tube, the tube was clear. I took a little piece of that wooden skewer, busted up that blockage and it drained out as it should. Now, when I got back home, got to my tools, I grabbed my boroscope out of curiosity and ran the camera up through that orifice and just trying to see if I could see anything in there. Well, I didn't see much because of the angle that the drain goes in the evap box, but I'll put some pictures up of what I captured on the boroscope and some pictures of the actual boroscope camera. As I pulled it back out, there was mud and debris on it from that buildup that's still in that HVAC box. Now you can see a little bit of a buildup, a mildewy, moldy looking buildup on the evap core itself. There's also some debris on the evap core itself. Now, what is the main cause of that? And the main cause of that is people not servicing their cabin air filter as they should. Now, we're gonna pull out my cabin air filter right now. I got a clip of that and show you what there is going on in there. Now, this cabin air filter is past due to be serviced. I replaced it in 2020. I forgot to replace it in 21. So this cabin air filter is two years old at this point. Now, it is far from the worst cabin air filter I've seen. It is pretty mild, but it still needs to be replaced. I've seen cabin air filters that are completely covered in hair, full leaves. I've even seen skeletal remains of mice and critters inside cabin air filters. I kid you not. It's insane the things you find in neglected HVAC systems. So this filter is not bad. There is dirt between the pleats as you see, but overall it's not bad, but it does need to be replaced. So the main issue here is when people let it get too far clogged up. When it gets really, really clogged up, the blower motor is still gonna pull suction on that filter. Sometimes it pulls that filter away from the frame and it bypasses it and junk and debris and stuff can get pulled through the blower motor and build up on the evaporator core and inside the evaporator box. And when that happens, that junk mixes with water and becomes a crusty, muddy paste. And that's what'll block up your drain. So you need to replace your cabin air filter regularly to keep your HVAC system in peak performance. So a lot of you may be wondering, well, how do I clean out my evaporator box? How do I clean out the evap box without disassembling my dashboard and taking this all apart? Because there's not really a good way to get in there. Well, you're in luck because Subaru has a solution for this and we will be covering that in an upcoming video. How to completely flush out the evaporator core, evaporator box without disassembly, and how to get rid of any musty or mildew smells you may have in your car. So if you've ever had an issue where you get in your car, turn the AC system on and a mildew smell blows out of the vents at you or a musty smell blows out of the vents at you, we're gonna show you how to correct that issue as well in this upcoming video. So guys, there you go. There is a reason why you may have water pouring out in the passenger footwell of your Subaru. What you need to check to correct that issue with the vent tube or the vent itself at the box how to prevent it by replacing your cabin air filter and keeping it serviced regularly. But in the next video, we'll show you how to clean out the mess once it's already happened. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see you all in the next one.